Hello everybody and welcome to Play Great Games. In today's episode, I'll be breaking down this trailer and giving you a couple of theories on the story and world of Elden Ring before it even comes out. I'm really excited about this video, so let's jump in. So, if you didn't know, the team who are making Elden Ring are also the guys who made Dark Souls, Bloodborne, and my favorite, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. So, when I heard a year or so back that these same guys and George J.J. Martin were making a new game, I was kind of freaked out. I love Sekiro. It's easily one of, if not their best game yet. The environment was just beautiful. The character design, as always, was super detailed and spectacular, and the story was simple but handled very well. When I watched the gameplay trailer, I saw some similarities to other games they made, so I'll be breaking down the newest Elden Ring trailer. So the trailer starts off with what looks like a warrior laying there at the feet of a horse, and off the horse comes a hooded character who walks over to the body. It looks like this game starts the way that the Soulsborne game started as well. Your hero is at his weakest point, just before death someone comes and saves him. In Dark Souls, you are in a prison, almost dead, and a knight saves you. In Sekiro, you were defeated by Genichiro and you lost your arm, but the sculptor saved you and gave you a new one. While the hooded character steps down, a voice, who I assume is the hooded character, and who we'll just refer to as voice number one, is talking about something known as the Tarnished Returning. The Tarnished will soon return. I'm guessing that these Tarnished guys are going to be the enemies in this game. And to me, the voice sounds a lot like Lord Kira from Sekiro. Then showing some beautiful scenery, mostly consisting of this ghostly tree thing, which we'll get into in a little bit, with the voice continuing to narrate about how they'll come by grace, forgotten, or something. I'd like to point out that the buildings in these scenes that they show all have the same style and design. Toward at the end of the trailer, there's even a boss that looks like he's part of these pillars. And then the voice starts to mention something that sounds a little more important. Something known as the Golden Order has fallen to its core. The So it sounds to me like either the Tarnished have overthrown this Golden Order, or it's fallen, and now the Tarnished have returned. I'm also theorizing that the Tarnished were banished by this Golden Order. That right there sounds perfect for this game. The Golden Order, years ago, banished an evil race of zombie things to another world or something. But now they've come back. Right after this, we get a shot of what looks like broken statues around this fire. The way that this set is set up reminds me of someone being cremated. The timing of this is strange. It's talking about something called the Golden Order being overthrown, and then it shows what looks like someone or something being cremated or burned. Very interesting. And the statues around this fire are very strange as well. Some are missing forearms and other body parts. After that, the voice kind of stops for a bit and we're showed some Sekiro-style fields with some very Sekiro-like music. It also shows our character summoning a mount. Also looks like you'll be able to ride a mount in this game. This also leads me to believe that there will be mounted combat, or you can fight people on your horse, and you'll see why in a second. Then some kind of massive turtle thing, and some giant monster things that look like they're carrying what looks like a coffin. And it's here where I believe that there will be mounted combat. This guy rides up to you from the group and the coffin, and you cut his head off. So it looks like you'll be able to do some fighting on your horse. If that wasn't enough, I have another shot that proves it. And this whole scene is really big in the trailer. It shows us a lot that gives us some hints on the story. First up, what are they carrying? It looks like it's important. You not only have the guys pulling it, but a bunch of guys guarding and a knight so it's definitely something big and are these guys tarnished they look like enemies but are they tarnished when i look deeper into the scene i realized something was off maybe the tarnished is a disease we can safely say that we have a couple people in this shot not including the mass of guys pulling this thing but we also have these guys now watch them move they act like zombies so maybe they're a form of the Tarnished, or maybe they've been infected. Then we get a different voice, which we'll call voice number two, and I've gotta say, it sounds awesome. I mean, I got so hyped just hearing this. Emboldened by the flame of ambition. 
is giving us some more hints to the story. How the Tarnished are striving to find the Elden Ring and how someone must extinguish the flame. And while he's telling us this, it looks like our main character is walking through some underground tunnels with some very interesting mobs. So maybe the Elden Ring is underground? Maybe, but I think it's really unlikely. It's here where we get what I think is a Tarnished. This thing. The voice is talking about Foul Tarnished and how they're looking for the Elden Ring, while this guy fights a massive messed up monster thing. The timing of this just leads me to think that this is a Tarnished. Another point I'd like to make out is as soon as this guy starts talking, everything changes. All of a sudden, we're underground, and hanging from the ceiling are these arms and other limbs, which if you look at it, kind of look like this thing. So maybe the Tarnished are growing from the ceiling? That, that sounds horrific. Kinda like the Darkspawn from Dragon Age. It's here where we get our first look at those crazy classic bosses from the Soulsborne games. I'm talking massive, messed up bodies with way too much health, with crazy swords that reach way too far, some ripped up clothes and a haunting voice that gives you PTSD every single time you hear, my name is so and so. Hey man, my name is Jabu Masataka Oliwa! And then some more shots of this tree thing. Maybe the Elden Ring is up there. So voice number one is talking about how they'll fight and how they will die, but this raises some theories for me. I'm pretty sure that voice number one is talking about the Tarnished. If they are, then they're saying that the Tarnished will try, but fail. Now this could just be some foresight or a prediction of the future. Or maybe the humans are overconfident. I think that right there is a great piece of story. The Golden Order banished the Tarnished to another world, but the Golden Order has fallen since then and the Tarnished are coming back. The humans, seeing this, are overconfident and think this will be easy. I don't know about you, but that sounds kind of cool. Actually, kind of awesome. Then it shows us some more of the steeds, so it looks like you'll be able to ride them out in this game. And here we get a shot of our character sitting at a campfire. This looks like he's out in the middle of nowhere, which means you can probably set up a campfire. This is really helpful if they add a spawn point to this campfire. And at this point, we get to see some ghost looking people, which I'm guessing is their online part of the game. Similar to Dark Souls, how you can sometimes meet up with different people online. Then we get a lot, a lot of shots of this dragon, which makes me think that this guy will be a large part of this story. If you look at each shot the dragon is in, he's always under the ghost tree thing. So maybe this dragon is the guardian of the tree, and it's here where we got more proof of mounted combat. So as we can see in every scene that our character is in, he is on a horse fighting oh, this dragon. And then a couple more shots of different bosses. And after this, we get to the climax. A new voice is added, and this one sounds a lot like a boss, I've gotta say. And he says... Something around this. This is this is really rough. I tried. I tried. Although we tarnished, plain as a lord, I command thee kneel. I, I don't know exactly what he's saying. I tried to make it out as best as I could. But when he's saying kneel, there's a lot we could take from it. But I'll get to that in just a second. As it shows an unmistakably massive boss taking off his cloak, he has a bunch of arms all over him. I'm guessing this guy is the embodiment of the Tarnish. This guy looks awesome, similar to the corrupted monk from Sekiro. With the way he's got this haunting expression imprinted on his face. And because he's massive. When it comes to the I command the Neil, it could be how the Tarnish think they're better than the humans, or they're taking over the world and having us as slaves. This also gives us some clues on the Elden Ring. Maybe if the Tarnish get it, they'll rule over us. I don't know, it's kind of a stretch. Or maybe, this guy is a fallen god. Plain is a lord, I command the Neil. Maybe he's a god, but I'm putting everything on this guy being the leader of the Tarnished. This, this just has to be the way the game goes. I mean, it has to. In this montage, we get what looks like our character sneaking up on several enemies. So maybe in like Sekiro, if you can sneak up close to an enemy, you'll be able to take out one of their lives. Maybe. But there is one part that stands out to me in this montage, and not for any good reason. This moose guy. This company really loves its fields with bosses waiting for you. Right after the moose, we get four shots, one kind of separated a bit, but it doesn't really matter, that really stand out to me. In the first, we get our character kneeling to a very strange looking person with a very unsettling mask. Then what looks like a queen and a guard, then a knight or a king at a table. 
He's looking very stressed or anxious. Then, finally, we get a man being grabbed by a molten hand. It's very interesting and almost doesn't seem to fit in this trailer. But to me, this sounds a little like Game of Thrones coming in. More specifically, George J.J. Martin. A king and queen, the king stressed over something, and a molten hand reaching for a man who has no emotion or reaction, and a creepy guy with a mask. Very interesting. I feel like this could be a very deep part of the game where it really gets into some different ideas or beliefs. I don't know, it's just a thought. But to, but to me, it does sound like George J.J. Martin coming through. And a bunch of random bosses later, we get this little bit of dialogue. Brandished the Elden Ring for all of us. Brandished means to wave or flourish something, especially a weapon, as a threat, in anger, or excitement. Flourish means to, of a person, wave something around to attract the attention of others. So maybe the humans were too prideful about it? I don't know. It is saying something about for all of us. Whether us means humans or humans and tarnished alike, I don't know. And with a couple more shots of this guy with a bunch of arms, it's done. So I don't know about you, but I'm really excited for this game. As for a couple of my theories, I think that at the end, a huge plot twist would be if you're the Elden Ring and you have to destroy yourself to save the world. Okay, maybe not destroy, but sacrifice. It also looks a lot like Sekiro. In Sekiro, the enemies range from massive koi fish to karate master monks in the jungle. Oh, and also monkeys. But you know what? Let's just never talk about that again, okay? Ever. Thanks. One more thing. In Sekiro, when you die, you can come back to life. But by doing it, you spread a disease to others in the game. This disease is called Dragon Rot. You can buy things to try to reduce it. It's a pretty big feature in the game that you'll be battling against for almost the entirety of the story. If an NPC gets it, it'll prevent you from completing any quests that have to do with that uh, character and also reducing something called the Unseen Aid, which is, in its simplest terms, you lose half your XP and gold when you respawn, but the Unseen Aid takes that away, so when you respawn with everything you had before. Look, Sekiro is really deep, I suggest you go play it, it's an amazing game. When you get Dragon Rot, you start coughing, and your body will start to decompose in a way, which, if you look at it, the Tarnished could be the final stages of Dragon Rot, and when you look at it a little deeper, at those guys who were carrying that tomb thing or whatever, those guys in the background were kind of walking like they were zombies. So this could be, the Tarnish could be the final stages of Dragon Rot. And it would link these two worlds. The music and the settings and the design and architecture is very similar to Sekiro. It's also similar to Dark Souls in many, many ways, but it's also very similar to Sekiro. So these games could be linked in a bigger way. The game looks great. It comes out somewhat soon, and I'm really excited. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know I'm a little late. If you guys have any suggestions for future videos, I'm always open for ideas. I hope you have a smashing day, and remember, life is short. Play great games.